Hi everybody. Um, all right, so I was trying to do a Facebook Live, but I'm having some connectivity issues. So I'm gonna just do this as a video um, instead, just so that I can get it out there to you guys. I'll probably put it on Facebook or Vimeo, so that's probably where you'll be seeing it right now. Uh, so I am here at the Yellow Door Gallery, um, which is inside of Red Twig. They are uh, an amazing local uh, florist and they also have this beautiful gallery space here. Um, so with that, I will get into the show that uh, Kat, Amsel, and I put together, um, which has just been kind of a nature-based mixed media theme. We kept it pretty open. Um, so you'll see a lot of her work is watercolor and uh, adding in some other mediums as well. And mine is mostly cyanotype, um, and some eco printing and then a little bit of photography, just kind of a little bit of everything really. Um, so I'll, I'll get into some of the work and show you here. So this is a couple of my pieces here. These are cyanotypes. The blue part here is cyanotype and the orange strip here is eco printed. Um, so those are mounted on a, a wood panel. And this one here is strictly a cyanotype. I'm gonna zoom in on this one because it has some beautiful details. So these are Queen Anne's Lace. And this was a 24 hour long exposure of cyanotype. And I do a wet cyanotype process, which means that the chemicals are put onto uh, the paper wet. And instead of letting them dry and then exposing them, you just start to expose it right then and there when the chemicals are wet. So that's why you get all of the kind of differences and variations and the little swooshes and everything. Um, you're adding vinegar and soap and other things that change the alkalinity and that affects the cyanotype chemical in different ways. So that is kind of how the process works. You're exposing it either to the sun or to a UV light um, in order to get the print. So those are my first few pieces there. And then this, that's just a little glimpse of the, the store area they have here, which is so cool. They have a lot of beautiful stuff. Um, this piece is a silk scarf that is eco printed. You can see some of the leaves here. And the purples come from a powdered natural tannin that comes from a seed actually. So I'm just learning to do this process on fabric. So it's pretty new to me. Um, so that's one of my very first results. And then these here are my healing box series. So these are photographs, but they are mounted on wood panels instead of behind glass. I just wanted them to be more accessible and I didn't wanna to have to worry about reflections and the box format that they were in, I thought fit really well. They look almost like they're really three-dimensionally in front of you. So that was really great. Um, so these I shot over a week or two, um, the year that my brother died a couple years ago, very unexpectedly. And it was just a way to spend time with death and with grief and with all of the emotions and feelings that come with that. And I just found it really healing. It was almost like a little meditation to sit there and arrange these things in this, almost like an altar, you know, and to capture them with the camera um, because they aren't, a, they aren't still there, of course. They were just temporary setups. So I think that that also adds another layer to the idea of how fleeting life is. So I'll probably be doing more of these in the future. I don't really think of that as a series that will end. It's just sort of a thing that I'll probably keep doing as new losses and difficult emotions come up in my life. So those are the healing boxes. And these here are a bunch of Cat's minis. She 
she does beautiful watercolor work. So I'm getting close on some of these. And these are pretty much, I think, um, entirely watercolor. But a lot of her bigger works have some really interesting other media added in, so I'll show you those too. So that's just some of her really beautiful stuff. And if you're seeing all the red dots on here, those are the ones that have sold already. But if there is anything you do see that um, doesn't have a dot and you're interested, you can always contact Red Twig in Hudson, Ohio and I'll link to their info below. Um, or you can contact me directly, message me, or through my website. I'm happy to kind of arrange things too. So this is the case. It's got, it's got just a nice mix of a lot of our smaller works in here. So we've got like some of these feather cyanotypes that I did. There's another one here. This is an eco print of mine with um, sweet potato vine. And all the marks on this came from um, bundling this. So it was rolled up and then wrapped with twine. And so the outer layers, um, when you wrap it with the twine, leaves the marks from the twine. So I really loved how those marks looked on that one. This one's one of cats and I love it. She does a lot of really, really whimsical little animals with wings. And you can see down here some of the extra layers that are from other media that she puts in. And there's some more feathers down there. And on this side, we've got the Luna Moths. Those are cats as well. These are some more little pieces of hers. And then these are, this is a series of three uh, ceramic plates with pressed plants that I did. Um, so they're just decorative plates to hang on the wall. But they were kind of an experiment too. I hadn't done uh, plates before. So it was, it was a fun thing to try and I really, was really happy with the results. This is another eco print here with some maple leaves. We'll go to the third section here. We've got another one of her little winged creatures. Love that one. And this is a little um, milkweed pod that's painted on the inside. Also by Cat. Really cool. I love that. Okay, this is one of my assemblage pieces, which I did a couple of years ago um, in a body of work on called Tree Altars. So I brought it into this show just because like, I felt like it really fit well with everything. So this one is called uh, The Rising Sun and it has um, encaustic. So this background here and the photo here have encaustic wax and then everything else is like found objects and various things that were either found or built, put together. I love doing assemblage. I haven't done any in a couple of years. It's a lot of time and work to put together, but they're wonderful to work on. So I'm sure I'll do some more in the future, but that is the rising sun. And this is probably my favorite one of cats or one of my favorites. I love red winged blackbirds, so there's that, but I also love like all these little extra layers that are mixed in to the watercolor. It just really creates like this beautiful little private world. And yeah. And that one is Red Winged Blackbird. And this is another series of her pieces here with all the beautiful swirls and the tree roots. I love, love that. And then these are my two large pieces for the show. Again, these are cyanotype with eco print in the details there. So I'll get a little closer. The square one is called Dreaming of Dawn. Get really close in because there's really beautiful details 
and how this printed. Like some of it really looks like a painted landscape in the background and it's just all kinds of little things you can discover. It's one of my favorite things about cyanotype. And um, I'm hoping to start working uh, over this winter on some online classes to start teaching processes and some of these different techniques that I do. So I just, one of the things that's next on my list, and this is some of the close up there. So the colors from this come from iron powder. It's a, it's a rust powder. And there's some steaming involved that brings out the rust and the leaf prints. So this one's very subtle leaf prints, but sometimes you have really, really strong leaf prints. It just depends on the leaves you use. So that's Dreaming of Dawn. And this one here is Lunar Nightshade. And this one's actually, let's see, this has got dill in it from uh, our garden. So the spider appears dill and down in here, you get into butterfly bush, also from our garden. And you can see the soap bubbles coming up in this one too, which is really neat. It really like picked up the texture on this one. So, so that is Lunar Nightshade. Okay, and this is a few more of um, Cat's pieces here. So the sunset one is like beautiful. Sand County Mountains, that's called. So beautiful. This is another one of my favorites because she put the um, milkweed pods, the actual pods into the piece, which I thought was so neat. And more little winged creatures. Milkweed mice. Really beautiful. And then we've got these guys next to the yellow door. Now these are eco prints and I didn't get really into the process of this, but um, basically eco printing, um, you're steaming the plants onto paper or fabric. I use paper mostly. And the paper is soaked in a chemical solution that allows the plant dyes to come out into the paper. So depending on the type of metal you use, you get different colors. So like um, the more orange tones that you see again here, those would come more from an iron solution that you would use. And then when you see um, like more of these green colors that you're getting um, right there too, and that comes from using alum powder. Uh, so you you can do like a lot of different things. What I do is I actually combine the two, so that I get um, a wider range of colors. I get some of the oranges and the grays and the greens, and they all mix together. So this was just a little set of four small panels I did. Um, and then we get to the big wall of the little bitty guys. So, this is all my little tiny tiles, my little nature tiles. So each one of these is completely unique. And I'll just kind of zoom in as I talk about them, but um, each one is a ceramic tile. Let's see, most of them are glazed. Some of them have like iron oxide on them. But they're, they're all fired clay tiles that I made by hand. And then the center piece in each one of these is an encaustic wax piece. And it is covered, it's covered by wax, but the print underneath the wax there, the, the leaf portion on this one in particular is an eco print um, versus this one here, like this one's a cyanotype. So this encompasses a pretty wide variety of techniques and art mediums. And I've got, oh, five, six, seven different 
sort of types of tiles. Some of them, like this one here, are pressed with plants. That one's pressed with a, a hosta into the clay. Um, other ones were just like a smooth with a speckled clay where you can see the texture of the speckles. So there's a lot of different really fun textures. This glaze here was a lake glaze, which means that it crackles up like a dry lake bed, which I love. It's really cool. I love um, glazes that really mimic some of the natural, like some of the just textures that happen in nature. So I am gonna have a bunch of these, like I said, um, any of the ones without the dots are still available. So you can absolutely get in touch with me or with the, the gallery. Um, and we can, we're happy to ship things as well. So just kind of let you see a whole bunch of these. I thought they were just really beautiful all together on the wall and I had so much fun making each one because they were each so different from the, the next one, you know. So making them was really fun. You know, I don't like production work. I don't like to have to do the same thing a bunch of times, but each one of these had so much variation in it that it, it didn't feel like that at all. Um, so I'll definitely be continuing to do some things like this in the future. I had a lot of fun making it. So that's the tile wall and the amazing couch. <laughs> and then the last little corner here, we have a, a couple more cyanotypes using, um, this is a called Sensitive Fern, which was named because it is very frost sensitive. So pretty much all of this wall is Sensitive Ferns. And this one again is a silk eco print here. So it's really neat because you can kind of see what different sorts of things you can do with just the same one type of plant. Um, there's just endless possibilities of the ways you can use nature when you're creating. So that's going to be like a big one of my um, proponents of trying to get some classes up and going is that I want to just talk a lot about how to bring nature into your studio or to your kitchen table or whatever so that you are um, learning how to let nature be a part of your whole process you know so that is the show and again i wish i could have gotten it to live stream but sometimes sometimes technology doesn't work quite the way we want it to uh so with that said uh, thank you for coming and doing a little tour of the show. It's going to be up uh, through next week, um, Tuesday. Uh, so if anybody locally wants to come and check it out or if there's anything you're interested in, again, you can contact with the information below here. And also it'll be on my Facebook and Instagram and everywhere too. So I uh, thank you for joining me and I will be seeing you with... Uh, some new work um, end of this week also uh, I'm gonna have some new stuff going up online uh, for the holidays so be on the lookout for that as well and until then I hope you have a wonderful week